Hi, please kindly subscribe to this channel, One Forum News, for the best analysis on politics, crime, security, and historical facts. In fact, fighting has intensified in Sudanese capital, Khartoum, with over 200 civilians killed just over the period of six days. Fighting between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces rages on since Saturday, April 11, 2023, with at least 200 civilians or over 200 civilians reported dead as gunfire and explosions increase in intensity. And someone may ask, why is this thing happening? This is just uh, as a result of the deadly power struggle between the country's two most powerful generals, that is the army chief, Abdel Fattah al-Bahan, uh, who happened to be the Sudan's de facto leader, and Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, who is the commander of the paramilitary rapid support forces, RSF. And this has raised fears of a wider conflict in the region. And as we all know, that region is not stable when it comes to conflict. It's always fighting here or fighting there. Sudan, South Sudan, the rest of that region is facing a lot of troubles when it comes to conflict. Just 18 months earlier, they jointly orchestrated a military coup to derail Sudan's transition to democracy. But now they are fighting over who and how the RSF will be integrated into the military and who will have ultimate control over fighters and weapons as part of plans to restore civilian rule. This always happened in the case of military takeovers. Once a lot of people contribute their might and powers towards taking over or leading a coup, when it gets to a certain level, the trust and the mistrust start to set in, a lot of issues happen. Some argue that the U.S. is backing one side and Russia on the other side. And the fight is practically about the military port that Russia is commissioned to build for Sudan. This wouldn't be a surprise because both the U.S. and the Russia has always been involved in proxy wars and have never confronted each other directly before. And I'm hoping that never happened because it will be very catastrophic and bloody. The two superpowers fighting together, that's not going to be easy. But when it comes to these proxy wars, like one supporting one country, the other against the other country, that have been all over the years. We've seen that all over the years since the World War, as well as uh, the, uh, the, the, the nuclear wars here, here and there, as well as the Cold Wars between the two countries. We've seen that all over the years. Some of us can say that in addition to all other theories, about this very conflict in Sudan, it is just personality clash between the two generals that is causing this. Because this always happens. Cases in point are, when you go to Burkina Faso, Thomas Sakara and Bles Kampori, they were very good friends. They stayed cool together, but at the end they became enemy. And one allegedly caused the death of the other. That is also a very debatable issue and still a court case, though very have been passed to some extent. When it comes to Ghana also, we can talk about General Kotoka of Ghana and his other colleagues after taking over power. A lot of misunderstanding happened between them or among them. When you go to Nigeria also, we have General Buhari and others. And even in some civilian instances, like the formation of the African Union, which was between Kwame Nkrumah and other African leaders forming blocks against one another, is all about power struggle. And that is exactly what is happening in Sudan. It's not a new thing. But they should find a way of resolving it amicably so that the country can be in peace again and democracy restored. And it is always as a result of who is to have the absolute power to control and rule. But at the end, it's the civilians and the vulnerable people that suffer. And that is what the two big generals have to consider. Because they have the guns, they have the weapons, they may be able to hide, but the civilians and the poor may not be able to protect themselves. On Monday, April 17, through to Friday, that's April 21st, both sides claimed to have made gains in the battle for Khartoum. Khartoum is the capital town of Sudan, so a lot of them are fighting so hard to take control over Khartoum. And it seems they are reporting that they've taken over a very good portion of Khartoum. Uh, but as observers, we can see a lot of smooth that hangs over uh, the city and residents reported hearing airstrikes, artillery fire, and shooting that have cut off 
basic services and damaged hospitals. An unaccounted number of people also died because when it happens like that, a lot of people may be caught in crossfire because this is about two military fighting, one paramilitary and the other one, the government supported military. And a lot of casualties are going to happen and a lot of people may not be even accounted for. But currently, diplomatic efforts to end the fighting also intensify with the African Union and Arab states calling for an end to hostilities. However, neither side has shown any willingness to compromise. And this always happens because when it comes to two military forces fighting, if you compromise in a way, it will be as if you are the weaker vessel. So they will all take their stand and, and make sure that they maintain that stand throughout the negotiation because they also want, one part may want to take control and the other one may also want to take control. And the two may be struggling over who lead the other. And that's mostly happened. But the mediators should do their best to be able to meet all of them halfway for peace to reign in Sudan. The United Nations Security Council also discussed the situation on Monday. And its General Secretary, Antonio Guterres, has strongly condemned the outbreak of fighting in Sudan. By just condemning can't solve the problem. So that is the view some of us hold. Just going about condemning will not solve the problem. We need more boots on the ground to be able to restore peace and democracy in Sudan, but not in a very bad way, but in a very good way, because the civilians who are the majority are struggling and suffering over there. Even when, when you look at things, students and staff at Khartoum University and some other schools and offices in the capital remain trapped and are scared to move. And since Saturday, people in the capital have been barricading themselves in their homes, wondering when electricity, running water, and peace will return to the city. Some reports suggested that the army has taken control of the state television, broadcasting images and statements in which it claims to have gained or regained control of ground in many places. That always happened. But let's see how far they'll be able to sustain that momentum to be able to take charge of the whole country through the capital town, Khartoum. We can only hope that peace and stability are brought to Sudan that has suffered for far so long since under Omar al-Bashir, who was the old austere president of Sudan. But we need peace in Sudan. Let the two parties, the two generals, let them come together, negotiate for peace. If there is a need for power sharing, they should try that and find a way of integrating the other paramilitary groups into the main military of Sudan. That is the only way we can have peace. Though trust is breached, but they can do their best to come together again. Old friends are the best. So the two old friends, the two old generals to come together to bring peace to Sudan. We are in their hands. Peace for Sudan, peace for Africa, and peace all over the world. Please kindly subscribe to this channel, One Forum News, for the best analysis on politics, crime, security, and historical facts. Thank you so much. Your comments are welcome.